Yes, when Disney acquired Marvel, they started the Disney Kingdoms line of comics, several different ongoing stories based on Disney attractions, and one of them was The Haunted Mansion. Now, unfortunately, this supplanted the SLG comics, so this is probably the reason those ones ended on an unsatisfying cliffhanger, but at least this one's trade is still in print. Earlier, there had also been a Disney Kingdoms line inspired by Rolly Crump's Unmade Museum of the Weird, which is also included in this collection. And I haven't read the Secrets of the Weird comics yet, but flipping through it here, it doesn't seem to feature any characters who actually made it into the mansion attraction. So while that does count as being mansion adjacent, I'm not covering it here. If I'm not including Phantom Manor adaptations, I'm not including adaptations of unbuilt things. Now, unlike the SLG comics, this is a single ongoing story with a single continuity, but right off the bat, tribute is paid to the varying different backstories given to the mansion, with a collection of locals telling creepy old stories about the creepy old house. Then we meet 15-year-old Danny and his explorer grandpa. Is this somehow also going to be an adaptation of that ice exploration show that used to be at Bush Gardens? Do you know where you're going next? To the top of the majestic and snowy Matterhorn. Hey, at this point, climbing the real one is probably less painful than riding the ride. Or maybe not, since Grandpa dies in an avalanche and Danny's life is in a malaise after that. But one lonely night, he receives a vision of Madame Leota begging him to come to the mansion. Danny. Come to the mansion now. Your grandpa needs you. It's your grandpa, Marty. Something's got to be done about your grandpa. So Danny summons all of his courage. I could check it out. It's just a house. A house you now know for a fact has something supernatural going on with it, but hey, whatever you need to cope. So Danny starts to move through the mansion, and it starts out being another character goes through the scenes of the ride in order story, but with a few changes. Notably, Danny does not see a hanging body, at least not yet. The changing paintings actually come to life, and the subjects of the paintings start chasing Danny until they chase him into the seance room. Enough! How dare you enter my chamber? You will leave my guest alone. So if our protagonist is Leota's guest, I guess technically in this story, Leota is the ghost host. No disrespect to Pete Renaday, but they should have just had Eleanor read the host lines for story and song. I am the great and benevolent Madame Leota. Benevolent in this continuity, anyway. Leota tells Danny that she summoned him to break the curse of an evil sea captain who has taken over the mansion and trapped the ghosts, destroying them if they don't turn evil. Only a living person can break the curse, for reasons I don't quite follow, but I'm rolling with this much more happily than I am with the movie's confusing half-explained rules, and Leota claims Danny was the only one she could reach because of his connection with his grandfather, who is somewhere in the mansion. So once again, Madame Leota has summoned a mortal to help with the curse. But at least this time I don't have to tediously button mash against a giant spider. But how am I supposed to help? I saw the monsters from the paintings, but I haven't seen any ghosts. Wait, you haven't? I could have sworn this guy was a ghost. Yeah, he came from a painting, but still. But much like in the ride, Leota's seance is the linchpin. Once she chants her spell, now Danny can see ghosts. Danny agrees to do his best, but Leota offers one final warning. But you must avoid the attic. At all costs. You do not want to run into Constance the Bride. Hopefully she doesn't come down to the ballroom like she did in that Connect adventure. The chapter ends on a cliffhanger, as it turns out Danny's on the radar of both the captain and Constance. I'm coming for you, Danny. We've been dying to have you. In chapter two, the ghosts lead Danny to the ballroom for the swing and wake. But unlike in the Connect adventure, Constance dares not follow into that cursed room. Danny's confused that the cursed ghosts are partying, but Pickwick explains. I am Pickwick, and what better way is there to spend eternity than partying? You should see what we do for Christmas, it's a nightmare. Which is fine, it's just annoying that it's nightmare during Halloween too. We already have 999 ghosts. How would you like to help us round it up to the epic 1000? I'm reasonably certain that won't open a portal to hell in this comic's continuity. Pickwick explains that because the captain was one of the few people to die within the mansion, he was granted power over some of its magic. I guess it's like how if you keep dying at the same part of Super Mario 3D World, they give you extra power-ups out of sympathy. So it seems like the easy solution would be for Danny to die and then he can defeat the captain on his own terms. 
but Danny doesn't want to, so that's not an option. The first to fall under the captain's thrall were apparently the ghosts in the dueling portraits, who attempt to shoot Danny, but fortunately they have Stormtrooper aim. When Pickwick asks why Danny's here, he reminisces about his grandfather and how he taught him about bravery. I've taken a few falls myself, Danny. It happens. What matters is if you get back up and try again. Your grandmother taught me that. She might have learned it from Leota talking to Jim Evers in an awkwardly shoehorned character arc moment, but she taught it to me much more organically. Do... do you miss her? Dearly, someday I will find her again. Someday I'll find her, your long-dead grandmother, my lover, your grandma, and me. Pickwick tries to cheer Danny up with the party, and his cheering up turns a bit sinister. You can tell from the red eyes, that can't possibly be good. Meanwhile, the painting subjects report back to the pirate captain, who monologues his backstory about what brought him to the mansion. Then on the dying breath of an old witch doctor, I was told a tall tale of a mansion that was haunted, but full of enough treasure to gift any pirate who found it more riches than a king. Me crew was sure that I had lost me marbles, but I knew this treasure was me destiny. I sailed far and wide, traveling to any and all haunted lands I could find, but none held what I desired. One day I chanced upon this mansion. As soon as I set foot on this land, I knew in my heart that this is what I had set sail for. The treasure would be mine! I plundered the halls and believed that the treasure would be deep within the flooded basement below. But instead, I walked the plank. Okay, but never mind that. You apparently found the submarine voyage sea serpent and the primeval world dinosaurs. Those seem like pretty big discoveries. The captain still has yet to find the treasure, but he thinks the mortal can help him. Meanwhile, Danny gives in and decides to party for a few minutes. Okay, maybe for a minute. May I have this dance? See, that's the way. Don't waste time in a suicide race with your friend. Just walk up and ask for a dance. So Danny starts enjoying himself, and the spell of the ballroom takes hold over him as he starts to forget why he's there. Chapter 3 begins with the captain's fruitless pursuit of the treasure. I've searched this black-spotted mansion for decades. I love the cutlass me death gifted me, but no amount of magic is worth being my room. All I've been needing is to find the treasure so that I may leave these hellish halls. This must be it. It has to be. If it took decades to search every room except one, I don't know if I'd be more relieved or annoyed that it was indeed in that last room. But it's a moot point anyway, since the room is, in fact, empty. Whoever crafted this mansion must have been a knave with a wicked sense of humor. Well, one of them had a wicked sense of humor, the other was just a fan of scaring children. So the captain decides once and for all he's gonna need the kids' help, and he crashes the party. And since the curse he put on the ballroom works too well, Danny's not scared. Not even when the captain turns the ghost scary. Only once he's physically removed from the room does the spell start to wear off and he starts to remember why he's here and that the captain is evil. And now, that evil captain is coming right for him and his host, Leota, is nowhere to be found. He's gonna need a new guy to help him out of this predicament, but what ghost could possibly be powerful enough to stand up to the captain? Excuse me, young man. Would you mind closing that door? The commotion could... Wake the dead. And hold for studio audience applause. So the Hatbox ghost offers to help Danny escape by giving him a tour. Now he's the ghost host and the pirate is his enemy. We got the same basic players as the Mystery of the Mance comic. We're just flipping around roles. That fool! Nothing but trouble since his return! I love how in just 13 years, we went from a movie where the fan service references to the ride were mostly distractions from the main story, to this comic, where even the fourth wall meta jokes about the actual attraction are narratively motivated. Case in point, the next page. The Endless Staircase. No mortals have ever seen this room in this house. Some have seen it in Liberty Square, but never in New Orleans. So the MC Escher room from the Florida mansion is a portal between all haunted locations in the world. And Old Hatbox has a specific philosophy on haunted houses. You see, the magic within the mansion reaches far and wide. Some are built as resting place for spirits, once they wish to retire from their haunting days. Some are places of pure magic for fun and exploration. Others for the mystic and macabre. But they are all built as reminders that in death, we should 
celebrate life. You know, I wasn't expecting the ghost with an evil smile to have such an uplifting outlook on life, but I kind of dig it. The dead enjoy their happy haunting, but they still remember the value of life. I can't! This is all just too much for me. I, I hate to say it, but I'm afraid, okay? Anything that isn't a little scary in life usually isn't worth doing. Oh, and once again, a better lesson about facing your fears than Eddie's kid had. I love how we've had two comics that both seem in part to be correcting the mistakes of the movie, and yet they still go in their own distinct, interesting directions with it. So Hatbox leads Danny to a room that's not in the New Orleans mansion, the library. But as soon as Hatbox leaves, Danny's intercepted by the captain who has taken Leota captive and forces her to confess the truth. Your grandfather's ghost is not in the mansion. I lied, Danny. Aww. Yes. Leota explains that it had to be a living person because the living can't call the mansion their home, which I guess means they have to be able to either escape or die. But the captain tires of her exposition and smashes her ball to a million pieces. But this time there's no lifeless head for the kid to accidentally grab and traumatize himself with. So the captain takes Danny himself and tells him to go to the attic and confront Constance for the treasure. Chapter 4 begins with a flashback to 1879, the day of Constance's final wedding. She's already planning to kill her newest husband. Then in the present, the captain posits that being killed in the mansion on her final wedding night gave Constance the power to kill not just the living, but also the dead. Make them extra dead. The captain threatens to kill Danny if he doesn't go up to the attic, but Pickwick and the ballroom ghosts save him in the nick of time now that they're no longer under the ballroom spell. But Pickwick wants Danny to go into the attic anyway because he remembers seeing a window up there. The captain chases Danny up and up until he runs into someone he should have seen in the stretching room, but I guess the very his hosts finally succeeded at not frightening someone prematurely. Remembering encouragement from his grandfather, he enacts an action sequence that's, well, kinda grotesque, but he makes it across the other side, swinging onto a decaying skeleton. And all the skeleton lost was a couple of bones and an eyeball. He makes it up to the attic, sneaks around avoiding Constance, and finds an empty treasure chest. But he sees the window and realizes it must be the way out, just in time to be caught by Constance. There is no way out. It will be dark soon. The chapter ends with Danny falling backwards out the window, just as we the guests theoretically do at this point in the ride, depending on whose fan theory you're following. But the final chapter opens, and Danny did not die from his fall. Aw, oh, isn't that swell? We get a cameo from... Dick or Horace or Clyde. The book doesn't make a choice on his name, but he quickly gets scared away because the ghosts are finally free. Once Danny completed his chilling challenge and found the way out, all the ghosts could roam as they choose. But that includes the captain, who threatens a new reign of terror. But despite his fear, Danny stands up to him. I broke the curse and beat you because I used the fear. Okay, use fear on captain. And it didn't work, I'm dead. Thanks a lot, Roberta Williams. And Danny's about to be dead too, but he's saved at the last minute by... Grandpa! Honestly, with the way their relationship has been shown over the course of this comic, this appearance hits me just as hard as the appearances of Leota and the Hatbox Ghost. This comic actually made me excited for its original characters. I can't believe a mansion adaptation is actually using, like, storytelling. Turns out Grandpa wasn't in the mansion because he's been with Danny all along, but he couldn't follow him into the mansion because of the curse. But he's so proud of him. It's so sweet. I'm legitimately emotionally invested in the relationship of the mortal kid in a haunted mansion story. How did that happen? But the captain gets back up and is once again on track to slaughter everyone until he's decapitated by Constance. Okay, I kind of love that Constance's role in this story is basically the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. She's terrifying, stay away from her, but if you're being threatened, she'll save the day because she wants to kill the one threatening you even more. You may continue, as you were. It'll be nice to have things back to normal before my wedding day. And besides, I hate pirates. They sing too much. Yeah, but I doubt this dead one was singing much about a pirate's life for him. Well, with the curse lifted and the spirits of the mansion restored, the option to come and go is ours again. That was all we wanted, true freedom. And we want to stay! 
Hey! See, how hard was that 2003 movie? The curse is lifted. Now the ghosts can truly be the happy haunts they were always meant to be. You could have even had Master Gracie and Elizabeth choose to go to heaven, but the others choose to stay. It was so easy. Also, the curse being lifted means Leota can reform herself, and of course, the mansion itself was the treasure all along. The real treasure was the houses we haunted along the way. Leota apologizes for lying, Danny forgives her, and now that he can see ghosts, he meets his grandmother. Damn it, comic book based on a theme park ride. Stop making me cry over the family of what's supposed to be the boring human character. Danny's grandparents tell him to live his life and they go off on adventures together. We get an epilogue with Danny talking about the current state of the mansion. Everyone's happy except the captain. The captain's head is being kept away from his body to make sure he doesn't completely reform like the other ghosts and cause any trouble again. Well, the other comics started with the pirate captain's head being kept in the hatbox. It's only fitting that this one ends with the pirate captain's head being kept in the hatbox. Danny knows the town is still scared of the mansion, so in order to help the people understand, he puts up the original teaser sign for the attraction. How is this comic using fan service this well and still keeping to a core emotional story? What wizardry is this? Life has moved on for Danny too, and he and his family have learned to grieve together. Although grieving is probably easier for Danny now that he knows his grandfather is still around as a ghost, but you know, he hasn't seen him recently. But he has seen some ghosts recently, some ghosts who followed him home. This book changed a ghost will follow you home from a sinister warning to an uplifting promise. That might be considered sacrilegious by some Mansion fans, but I think this story absolutely earned it. I loved this comic. It had just about everything I'd want from a Mansion story, except maybe the singing bus, but pretty much everything else, and it made me care about its own original characters, which is a real uphill battle for Mansion adaptations, let me tell you. It probably helps that at no point is this trying to fully explain the backstory of the Mansion. This is just a story that happens in the Haunted Mansion, and it can coexist with others, as long as you give some characters leeway to switch allegiances. And as a Haunted Mansion story, it is one of my favorites. In fact, it's pretty much the original reason I'm doing this video. I initially had this idea long before the new movie was confirmed because I picked up and flipped through this comic years ago at the gift shop in New Orleans Square. And at the time, the only other real attempt I'd encountered to turn the Haunted Mansion into a narrative was the Eddie Murphy movie. And I was just blown away by how this comic did it so much better. And it opened my eyes to the many ways one could tell better stories about the mansion. So this one holds a special place in my heart and it's still one of my favorites. I think it absolutely holds up. So hurry back, we would like your company.